hi, let's talk about the internet use. The RA10175, also known as the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012, is the consolidation of Senate Bill Number 2796, proposed by Senator Edgardo Angara, and House Bill Number 5808, authored by Susan Yap Sulit of the Second District of Tarlac. Uh, this was passed by the Senate and the House of Representatives on June 5 and June 4, respectively. It was signed into law by former President Benigno Aquino III on September 12, 2012. This is a official rule in the Republic of the Philippines about our use of the internet. The objective of this act is to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information and data online and to penalize the act of misuse, abuse, and illegal access to information and communications technology. Section 3 Definition of Terms Access This refers to instruction and making use of any resources of a computer system or communication network. Alteration refers to modification or change in existing uh, computer program. Communication is a transmission of information through ICT, uh, media, voice, video, and other forms of data and other social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Messenger. A computer, electronic device that can be connected to the internet. This one is used as to achieve communication. This can be used. Computer program, set of instruction executed by the computer to achieve intended results. Computer system, it covers any type of device with data processing capabilities like laptop, computer, and mobile phones. Cyber is an electronic medium where online communication takes place. Um, online selling, online buying, and communication can be can happen in cyber world. Critical infrastructure is a body of system, networks, assets that are so essential and it is needed to continue its use to ensure the security of a given nation, its economy, and its safety. Cybersecurity is used to protect the cyber environment, organization, and the user's assets. Service provider provides a service for the for the people so that they can communicate. Uh, examples of service provider here in Philippines is PLDT, Converge, and Globe. Database is a representation of information intended for the use of a commu computer system. Interception refers to listening or recording the content of communication. It may either be directly or indirectly through the computer system or through the uh, use of electronic eavesdropping. So let's proceed to section 4 which is the cybercrime offenses. Under this section, we have subsection A. This refers to the offenses and violations regards on the three network system, such as confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Under this subsection, we're going to tackle the subdivision 1, the illegal access. This refers to the person who have an access to the whole system without the consent of the owner. Subdivision 2, the illegal interception. It is committed intentionally to prevent the authorized person to access the whole system by technical means. Subdivision 3, the data interference. Collapsing or deleting of computer data without right. For example, viruses that can threaten the integrity or use of data and programs. System interference. The fourth offense under this section would be the system interference. This involves the intentional alteration or reckless hindering with functioning of a computer network. This simply states that everything that has relation with regards to deleting necessary and relevant files in court trials and cases involving cybercrime and cyberbullying will be pressed charges on. The fifth offense under this section is the misuse of devices. The misuse of devices is often referred to as the use, production, sale, procurement, and distribution of certain devices containing important files and a computer password or any code that can crack open different locks. The sixth offense under this section would be cyber squatting. 
Cyber squatting is registering, selling, or using a domain name with the intent of profiting from the goodwill of someone else's trademark. To simplify this offense, it is simply the way people make money by using a big company or influencer's name. Cyber squatting is somewhat similar to scamming, and people who do this shall be pressed charges on. Computer-related forgery. The input, alteration, or deletion of any computer data without resulting in authentic data with the intent that it be considered or acted, acted upon for legal purposes as if it were authentic regardless whether or not the data is directly readable and intelligible, or the act of knowingly using computer data, which is a product of computer-related forgery as defined herein for the purpose of perpetuating a fraudulent or dishonest design. A common technique used in the sending of an email to targets with a website link for users to click on, which might either download malware onto the user's digital devices or sends users to a malicious website that is designed to steal users' credentials or phishing. The spoofed website or farmed website looks like the organization's and or agency's website and prompts the user to input login credentials. The email provides different prompts to elicit fear, panic, and or a sense of urgency in order to get the user to respond to the email and complete the task requested in the email as soon as possible, such as the need to update personal information to receive funds or other benefits, warnings of fraudulent activity on the user's account, and other events requiring the target's immediate attention. Computer-related identity theft The intentional acquisition, use, misuse, transfer, possession, alteration, or deletion of identifying information belonging to another, whether natural or juridical, without right, provided that if no degree has set in cost, the penalty imposable shall be one degree lower. Identity theft is the crime of obtaining the personal or financial information of another person to use their identity to commit fraud, such as making unauthorized transactions or purchases. Identity theft is committed in many different ways and the end result is the victims are typically left with damage to their credit card, finances, and reputation. Cyber sex. It is the willful engagement maintenance, control, directly or indirectly, of any lascivious exhibition of sexual organs or sexual activity with the aid of computer system for favor or in consideration. Ito ay mga paggawa ng sexual activity through the use of computer system. And there is also a discussion in this matter if it involves couple or people in a relationship that engage in the, in cyber sex it is not covered by the law if the act is not favor or consideration pero kung ang isang tao sa relationship ay nagdemanda na patungkol sa pagpilit sa kanya na gumawa ng cyber sex then it is covered by the law Child pornography. The child pornography committed via computer is unlawful or prohibited act is defined and punishable by the Public Act Number 9775 or the Anti-Child Pornography Act of 2009. It carries a penalty of one degree higher than the provided by RA. 9775 Unsolicited Commercial Communication It refers to contents that seeks to advertise or sell products or services which are prohibited through the use of computer system. But there are exemptions relating to sending unsolicited material. First, it is not a crime if there is a prior consent from the recipient. The intent of communication is an announcement from the sender to the user or a customer. The commercial electronic communication contains an easy and reliable way for the recipient to reject and does not purposely disguise the source of the electronic message 
and also does not intentionally include misleading information in any part of the message to, in order to induce the recipient to read the message. Libel, the last content-related offenses under the cyber squatting. The unlawful or prohibited acts of libel as defined in the Article 355 of the Revised Penal Code as amended, committed through a computer system or any other similar means which may be devised in the future. It refers to published false statement that can damage a person's reputation. Section 5 Other Offenses The following acts shall also constitute an offense. First, aiding or abetting in the commission of cybercrime. Any person who purposely helps or abets in the commission of any of the offenses mentioned in this act shall be held responsible for such offenses. Attempts in the commission of cybercrime. Any person who willfully attempts to commit any of the offenses identified in this act shall be held liable. Section 6. All crimes defined and penalized by the revised penal code as amended and special laws if committed by, through and with the use of information and communication technologies shall be covered by the relevant provision of this act. The penalties to be imposed in this act shall be one degree higher than that provided for the revised penal code as amended and special laws, as the case may be. Section 7. Liability under other laws. A prosecution under this act shall be without prejudice to any liability for violation of any provision of the revised penal code as amended or special laws. So let's proceed to section 8 which is the penalties. Any person who found guilty in section 4 under subsection A and section 4 for under subsection B shall be punished with afflictive penalties like prison mayor or 6 years and 1 day to 12 years imprisonment and fine of at least 200,000 pesos up to a maximum amount depends on the damage incurred by the person. Any person who found guilty in section 4 under subsection A in subdivision 5 or the misuse of devices shall be punished with afflictive penalties like prison mayor or 6 years and 1 day up to 12 years of imprisonment and a fine of not more than half million or both. Any person who found guilty in section 4 under subsection A and committed against critical infrastructure should be punished with afflictive penalties like reclusion temporal or 12 years and 1 day up to 20 years of imprisonment and fine of at least half million up to a maximum amount depends to the damage incurred by the person. Any person who found guilty in child pornography should be punished with the penalties as enumerated in Republic Act No. 9775. Any person who found guilty in Section 4 under Subsection C in Subdivision 3 shall be punished with correctional penalties like arresto mayor or 1 month and 1 day up to 6 months of imprisonment and fine of at least 50,000 but not more than 250,000 or both. Any person who found guilty in Section 5 shall be punished with unlawful imprisonment in the first degree or lower than that and fine of at least 100,000 pesos but not more than 500,000 pesos or both. Section 9. Corporate Liabilities This pertains to the legal actions of corporations for criminal actions that are done by natural persons. Section 10. Law Enforcement Authorities The National Bureau of Investigation and the PDP National Police shall be responsible for the efficient and effective law enforcement of the provisions of this Act. The NBI and the PNP shall organize a cybercrime unit or center managed by special investigators 
to exclusively handle cases involving violations of this Act. Sinasabi sa Section 10 na ang NBI at PNP ang may responsibilidad sa batas na yun. Kinakailangan nila magsagawa ng isang cybercrime unit para mahuli mga lumabag sa ganong batas. Section 11. Duties of Law Enforcement Authorities To ensure that the technical nature of cybercrime and its prevention is given focus and considering the procedures involved for international cooperation. Law enforcement authorities, specifically computer or technology crime divisions or units, responsible for the investigation of cyber crimes, are required to submit timely and regular reports, including post-operation, pre-operation, and investigation results and such other documents as may be required to the Department of Justice for reviewing and monitoring. Sinasabi sa Section 11 na kinakailang magsumitin ng report sa nangyayaring operasyon at kung ano yung resulta ng nasabing investigasyon. Dahil maaari itong kailanganin ng Department of Justice. Section 12 Real-Time Collection of Traffic Data Law enforcement authorities with true cause shall be authorized to collect or record by technical or electronic means traffic data in real time associated with specified communications transmitted by a computer system. Sinasabi sa Section 12 na kinakailangan kunin or i-record ng law enforcement authorities ang traffic data na makukuha sa cybercrime at kinakailangan din makapagtulungan ng mga service provider para makuha ito. The court warrant required under this section shall only be issued or granted upon written application and the examination under oath or affirmation of the applicant and the witnesses he may produce. And the showing, one, that there are reasonable grounds to believe that any of the crimes enumerated Herein above has been committed, or is being committed, or is about to be committed. Number two, that there are reasonable grounds to believe that evidence that will be obtained is essential to the conviction of any person for, or to the solution of, or to the prevention of any such crimes. And three, that there are no other means readily available for obtaining such evidence. Section 13. Preservation of Computer Data the integrity of traffic data and subscriber information relating to communication services provided by a service provider shall be preserved for a minimum period of six months from the date of the transaction. Content data shall be similarly preserved for six months from the date of receipt of the order from law enforcement authorities requiring its preservation. Law enforcement authorities may order a one-time extension for another six months provided. That was computer data preserved, transmitted, or stored by a service provider is used as evidence in a case. The mere furnishing to such service provider of the transmitted document to the office of the prosecutor shall be deemed a notification to preserve the computer data until the termination of the case. The service provider ordered to preserve computer data shall keep confidential the order and its compliance. In Section 13, the main goal in preservation of computer data is to protect the data from being lost or destroyed and to contribute to the use and progression of the data. Data preservation is to ensure continued access to the data for as long as necessary. Preservation is done through formal activities that are governed by policies, regulations, and strategies directed toward protecting and prolonging the existence and authenticity of the data. Section 14 Disclosure of Computer Data Law enforcement authorities, upon securing a court warrant, shall issue an order requiring any person or service provider to disclose or submit subscriber information, traffic data, or relevant data in his each possession or control within 72 hours from receipt of the order in relation to a valid complaint officially documented 
and assigned for investigation and the disclosure is necessary and relevant for the purpose of investigation. In Section 14, it is exposing or revealing an information or relevant data of a person but it can be done if a law enforcement authorities have a court warrant to reveal an information or data of a person. Disclosure is necessary and relevant for the purpose of investigation. Section 15. Search, seizure, and examination of computer data. When a search and seizure warrant is properly issued, the law enforcement authority should likewise have the following powers and duties. Kumbaga, bago tayo maghanap o kumuha ng informasyon sa mga computer o ebidensya, ang una nating kakailanganin na papeles ay search warrant o seizure warrant na pinapayagan tayo ng korte o judge para maghanap o kunin ang isang mahalagang impormasyon o ebidensya na makakatulong sa kaso. Magkakaroon tayo ng kakayahan na bantayan, gumawa ng bagong kopya at panatilihin katotohanan ng mga ito. At higit sa lahat, magkakaroon tayo ng kakayahan na ipa-examin sa eksperto ang mga computer data storage sa sakaling may tingatago pa itong lihim o makakatulong lalo sa kaso. At maaari tayo na humilin na patagalin pa ang paghahanap o paigsamin sa nalakap na ebidensya. Ngunit, 30 days lamang papayag ang korte o judge. Section 16 Custody of Computer Data Sa lahat ng computer data kasama ang nilalaman nito rapid data nito ay kailangan ma-examine na maayos at sa ilalim ng warrant paper at sa loob ng 48 hours lamang. Saka ipapadala sa korte ng nakabalot sa package na may nakalagay ng araw at oras kung kailan ito na-examine kasama ang apidabig of law. Kaya kailangan ng mga law enforcement authorities na lingawin na wala na itong kopya o na bagong ang nilalaman na ito o nagamit na sa ebidensya bago man dumating sa konti. Section 17, Destruction of Computer Data Upon expiration of the periods as provided in Sections 13 and 15, service providers and law enforcement authorities, as the case may be, shall immediately and completely destroy the computer data subject of preservation and examination. Ito ay para wag mo compromise ang data privacy of the person na nasa case. Section 18, Exclusionary Rule Any evidence procured without a valid warrant or beyond the authority of the same shall be inadmissible for any proceeding before any court or tribunal. This is also to guarantee na hindi maaabuso yung mga authorities sa mga nahawakan nilang data. Section 19, Restricting or Blocking Access to Computer Data When a computer data is prima facie found to be in violation of the provisions of this Act, the DOJ shall issue an order to restrict or block access to such computer data. The government can take down your website or even confiscate your computer kapag nalaman na may na-violate ka sa batas na ito. Section 20. Non-compliance Failure to comply with the provisions of Chapter 4 hereof specifically the orders from law enforcement authorities shall be punished with the violation of Presidential Decree Number 1829 with imprisonment of prison correctional in its maximum period or a fine of 100,000 pesos or both for each and every non-compliance with an order issued by law enforcement authorities. Section 21. What is jurisdiction? Jurisdiction is considered as the official power to make legal decisions and judgments, stating that this includes any violation committed by a Filipino national regardless of the place of commission. No one and nothing is to be considered as higher and stronger than this law. 
It also says that jurisdiction shall lie if any of the elements was committed within the Philippines or committed with the use of any computer system wholly or partly situated in the country, meaning that jurisdiction is applicable towards the plenty amount of cyberbullying that is found circulating on the internet in the Philippines or outside. Section 22. The section involves dealing with international affairs and such. This shows that all relevant international instruments on international cooperation in criminal matters arrangements agreed on the basis of legislation and domestic laws to the widest extent possible for the purposes of investigations concerning criminal offenses related to computer systems and data. This offense shall be given full force and effect without holding back. Section 23, Department of Justice or DOJ. There is hereby created an office of cybercrime within the DOJ designated as the central authority in all matters related to international mutual assistance and extradition under Executive Order or EO 292. The DOJ is the government's principal law agency. As such, the DOJ serves as the government's prosecution arm and administers the government's criminal justice system by investigating crimes prosecuting offenders and overseeing the correctional system. The DOJ, through its offices and constituent or attached agencies, it is also the government's legal counsel and representative in litigations and proceedings requiring the services of a lawyer, implements the Philippines' laws on the admission and stay of aliens within its territory, and provides free legal services to indigent and other qualified citizens. Section 24 Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center. There is hereby created, within 30 days from the effectivity of this act, an interagency body to be known as the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center, or the CICC, under the administrative supervision of the Office of the President, for policy coordination among concerned agencies and for the formulation and enforcement of the National Cybersecurity Plan. A. To formulate a national cybersecurity plan and extend immediate assistance for the suppression of real-time commission of cybercrime offenses through a computer emergency response team, or the CERT. B. To coordinate the preparation of appropriate and effective measures to prevent and suppress cybercrime activities as provided for in RA 10175. C. To monitor cyber crimes cases being bonded by participating law enforcement and prosecution agencies. D. To facilitate international cooperation on intelligence, investigations, training, and capacity building related to cyber crime prevention, suppression, and prosecution. Section 25 Composition. The CACC shall be headed by the Executive Director of the Information and Communications Technology Office under the Department of Science and Technology or the ICTO or TOSD. As chairperson with the Director of the NBI as Vice Chairperson, the Chief of PNP, Head of the DOJ Office of Cybercrime, and one representative from the private sector and the team as members. The CACC shall be manned by a secretariat of selected existing personnel and representatives from the different participating agencies. The Section 26 of RA 10175 is Powers and Function. The CACC or the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center shall have the following powers and function. First one is investigate all cybercrimes where computer systems are involved. This is where a victim can seek help from CERT through a virtual platform, where they can just message or email the team regarding their cybercrime complaints instead of going to the main office to file a case. The second powers and function of this act is to coordinate the preparation of appropriate and effective measures to prevent cybercrime activities provided for in this act. The Republic Act responds and coordinate all the necessary course of actions to prevent cybercrime activities like cybersex, child pornography, hacking into personal accounts, breaking into competitor, or any other kind of crime using technology. 
Third powers and function of this act is to monitor cybercrime cases being banded by participating law enforcement and prosecution agencies. The cybercrime are being reviewed by different prosecution agencies in order for the victim to get their rights and justice in experiencing these illegal activities. Fourth powers and function of this act is to facilitate international cooperation on intelligence, investigations, training and capacity building related to cybercrime preventions, suppression, and prosecutions. This act worked together with international in regards in, in enhancing the knowledge, performing precise investigations, offering well training programs, or in general is to obtain more useful resources in order for this act to abolish or prevent cybercrime activities. The fifth powers and function of this act is to develop public, private sector, and law enforcement agency relations in addressing cybercrimes. This is where the Act coordinates the support and participation of business sector, local government units, and non-government organizations in cybercrime prevention programs and other related projects. The sixth powers and function of this Act is to recommend enactment of appropriate laws, instances, measures, and policies. This is to maintain necessary and relevant databases for statistical and monitoring purposes. The seventh powers and function is to develop capacity within their organizations in order to perform such duties necessary for the enforcement of the Act. This is to call upon any government agencies to render assistance in the accomplishment of the CICC's mandated tasks and functions. The last powers and function of this Act is to perform any other functions as may be required by the Act. This is to perform all other matters related to cybercrime prevention and suppression, including capacity building and such other function and duties may be necessary for the implementation of this Act. The Section 27 of 10175 is Appropriations. The amount of 50 million pesos shall be appropriated annually for the implementation of this act, meaning that to implement this act to cybercrime prevention, they must recompense or finance 50 million pesos annually or every year. The Section 28 of Republic Act 10175 is implementing rules and regulations. The ICTO, DOSD, the DOJ, and the DILG shall jointly formulate the necessary rules and regulations within 90 days from approval of this act and for its effective implementation. Meaning that the three agencies involved in this act must formulate new necessary rules for IRR or the implementation of rules and regulations of Republic Act 10175 within 90 days for its effectivity. Section 29 Superability Clause If any provision of this act is held invalid, the other provisions not affected shall remain in full force and effect. In this case, any provision in the supplemental indenture in any note or coupon or in any note guarantee shall be invalid, illegal, or unenforceable. The validity, legality, and enforceability of the remaining provisions shall not be any way be affected or impaired thereby. All laws, decrees, or rules inconsistent with this act are hereby repealed or modified accordingly. In this event, the provisions of Code Section 280G or 4999 or any successor provisions are repealed without succession. This Section 10 shall be of no further force or effect. Section 31 Effectivity This Act shall take effect 15 days after the completion of its publication in the official gossip or in at least two newspapers of general circulation. This agreement shall be become effective upon the date first written above and shall continue in effect for months thereafter unless sooner determined in accordance with the provision of this article.